On this episode of Sally Speed Shop, I struggle with my drum brakes while you watch and hopefully learn something. We'll see. All right, so we're at my buddy Garrett's shop up north of LA a little bit, and I'm gonna do the rear brakes on the Hornet and check over a couple other things to make sure everything's okay. Um, so what you're gonna need, you're gonna need jack, jack stands, and all that to get the car off the ground. But of course, break loose your lug nuts before you get the car up off the ground because you won't be able to once it's up. Well, you should be able to, but my e-brake's broken because my dad broke it. So most people would be able to break it loose afterwards, but you know, the Hornet's special, so we'll figure it out. always a good idea to leave the jack under there just in case because you never know what's going to happen. Help if you can get the lug nut out of the socket. Just don't laugh at me dropping things. Whatever. So, to mark that set, I'm going to put the lug nut back on it. That way, I won't forget. But I'm going to have to take it off to remove the drum, obviously, so don't think I'm stupid. Alright, so once you have your wheel out of the way, you have your brake drum exposed, and you see I have my lug nut marking, which stud, the part of the wheel that I marked goes on. That's not a normal thing, that's just because I had the wheels and tires balanced on the car, so you're not going to have to worry about that. So I'm going to have to take this off, and remember which stud that is, and then I should be able to pull my brake drum off if everything works well. Sometimes these get stuck and they give you just an absolute nightmare trying to get them off, but as you can see, mine came off no problem at all, so that's good. And I'll put my lug nut back on just to make sure I don't forget where my wheel goes. And then you get to look at a beautiful brake drum, and a lot of people are very confused by these, and wow, I have used every bit of the shoe on this side. You can see it's less than an eighth of an inch thick right there, which is kind of ridiculous. This side's still pretty good. It's like it's just riding on the back part of the shoe. So yeah, that's not fantastic, but that's okay. We'll fix it. All right, so we've all run into this issue where we ordered a part, and it wasn't the right one. Um, I ordered these brake shoes for the rear of the Hornet, and... This is what they said fit the car. And from my research, this is what should fit the car, but it doesn't. Uh, it's way too big if you hold it up there. It just It's a monstrosity compared to that one. But when 
when I bought this car, it came with an extra set of brake shoes, but only two, so I can do half my brakes. So I guess I'm just gonna pick the worst ones <laughs> out of what we have going on here and change them out for new ones because, uh, yeah, because, yeah, I don't have a reason. It's a bad, bad thing, but don't do what I'm doing. Go buy the right parts, but I'm just gonna make this work because I'm already here, so I might as well change them at least that one because that one's horrible so i'm gonna work on that and then try to do a, a how-to just on that part <laughs> changing half your brake half your brakes don't change all of them just have them but anyway even with that fiasco going on what you're going to want to do is clean your brakes before you start taking them apart so you can actually see what's going on you can use stuff like uh, CRC uh, Auto's Brake Clean or whatever this is, Johnson's Non-Flammable Brake and Parts Cleaner. So we'll see how it works, but get a drip pan and so you don't make a mess in whoever shop you're in and clean your brakes. fixes I did on power door on this car there's these clips that hold these little retaining springs in and one of mine broke so there's literally what would hold on a piece of like your door panel holding that retaining spring onto <laughs> the car yeah it's a bit roadkill I think but anyway to take the brakes apart get a pair of pliers or something and you just pull on these springs and pull them up over you know, the screw that they're on. Normally. And don't forget where everything went. That's important. You can even take a picture beforehand if that helps you. They can be kind of stubborn sometimes, in case you couldn't tell. But once you have that apart, you gotta take one off on the bottom. Which I don't even know how this is on there. I think this whole brake side is just rigged on here. Which is not really what you want to do with your brakes, but if it works, whatever, right? Something just hit you. <laughs> and as your entire brake falls apart, at least you know the other side is still intact for you to look at. Alright, so you can see here, that's that clip that I rigged into place to make work. And it's kind of giving me a nightmare right now getting it off. So I'm just going to sit here and fight with it for a little while more till it comes apart. which it should at some point. There we go. I am not a fan of this style of retaining the shoes. Uh, normally you have a little, like, there's a, a thing that sticks through and like, I don't know, you twist a spring onto it. It's a lot better, but apparently this is what AMC did and it's not a good design for taking apart, but I guess it works. Even if it's a pain to work on. For those who have never seen inside uh, drum brake, this is the adjuster. So as your shoes wear out, there's a little tab back here that catches on these teeth 
and it adjusts the shoes out as they wear so that you never lose braking in the back or in the front, I guess. Any drum brake does this. Um, so when you put new shoes on, you got to screw it in and then you screw it out as far as you can till the, the drum slides over the shoes and then it'll adjust itself from there. So for those who have never seen that, that's what that is. Will it ever, ever go back together? Nobody knows. I'm really not a fan of this design. I remember messing with these on the side of the road on Power Tool. I think it was at the hotel, actually. And it was just a nightmare to get back together. So, hopefully it doesn't treat me the same this time. We'll see. This moment right here is what I've been working towards. I hope. All right, okay. Really? <laughs> so there's like this double tab thing and it just went in between the two layers of the tab. So it's not all the way off yet, but it's close. Yeah, that moment that I was working towards, I just failed. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Not a fan of that design, but look, that's why we're changing these. That's pretty well used up. That's about as much life as you could get out of a brake shoe if you really, really pushed it. And it's weird because the shoe's not even seated on this thing all the way, but I know that it stopped the car, so maybe I can address that too. We'll see. Oh, goodness. All right. So, while many people look at drum brakes as witchcraft happening inside of that closed drum, it's actually not all that complicated. So, this is the basic setup, and these, these points rest on a little pivot point up here at the top, which these springs go to. Then, you have a wheel cylinder that sits on these two points, and when you push your brakes, it pushes out on those, which then spreads the shoes out into the drum, thus stopping your car. Um, and then these springs serve to pull it back. Um, and then you have this cable that comes around to this, which basically is there to let your brakes self-adjust. So this spins as your uh, brakes get um, older, as they wear, and that way it pushes out the bottom so that when it pushes out the top, it's wearing more evenly on this. It never wears completely evenly, but it makes it a lot closer to evenly. So. Even though it looks kind of complicated, it's actually a relatively simple process. So, to start, I'm probably going to do what I did last and try to hook these guys into where they go before I do anything else. Again, you're gonna hate me for saying it, but not a great design. It is not very user friendly. So what I'm trying to do here is hook the retaining spring back into the new clip that I just put on instead of that uh, door panel holding clip, which is not what you want holding your brakes together. So I got a real one. I had to modify it slightly to make it fit, but... <sighs> that is frustrating. Hey, hey. So, that part of the puzzle.
this is gonna be interesting. Let me just take everything off. Why does it work so smoothly one time and then not the rest of the time? I've always found the easiest way to put these on is to just grab a screwdriver and use the screwdriver as a bit of a ramp. Because that takes a lot of pressure to do that and it's mildly terrifying when you do it honestly, but it works. So. Because my e-brake's broken on my other side, so I just went ahead and took this side apart too. Because, you know, if your brakes go out, who needs an e-brake? Safety first, or third, or whatever the saying is. Safety third in this case, I guess. Or last. Eventually this thing will get out of the way. My goodness. All right. Adjust it at the end. basically back together. All right, so once you get your assembly back together with the new shoes on, you're going to have to adjust this adjuster out until the shoe just, or drum just barely fits over the shoes. And right now it's a little loose, so I'm gonna take it back. Sign. 
I might want to wear a glove for this because that thing's pretty mean. I wish the hornet sounded like that. Not quite, though. Area, that's done. You're supposed to get the drum turn at a machine shop or auto parts store, but this is kind of a temporary deal. I have bigger plans for the Hornet coming up, so this is basically to get me through power tour. That's the goal. And until I buy another car, because this is what I drive every day right now. So, yeah. Not the most educational thing on drum brakes, but I hope you at least saw kind of what was going on and how they work. Um, I guess I'm going to put the wheels back on and make sure it's good after I clean the other side, but you already saw me do that on this side, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Yeah. Well, everything fell apart, but... Might take a second. <laughs>